Manevara se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV de osia dem yopo Ghana has been ranked ninth riskiest country to do business in Africa. Ninth riskiest country to do business in Africa. In fact, this report by Oxford Economics Africa, an independent economic advisory firm, examines profits and pitfalls of polarization in each African country, African-led security interventions, and how African countries are financing for the future. So this is a very, very critical um, incident because many people will be looking at how this will communicate to people who want to do business in Ghana or maybe are believing the governor of the Bank of Ghana who two days ago suggested that the first and second quarter reports suggest that the IMF bailout program is helping us to beat the projections by IMF itself. Whether he's speaking the truth or telling lies uh, just to distort figures, we'll find out later as we continue our conversations in this country. Again, another very worrying story. Ghana has lost $6.3 billion of its gross international reserves. You know, the gross international reserves are what you can bank your hopes on in case you are not able to service interest on your loans. Just remember that a few weeks ago, the governor of the central bank suggested that because Ghana was able to defer payment on interest rates, it was able to save $2 billion. And so if within two years, we've lost $6.3 billion, it means that if we're paying interest on our loans, this $6.3 billion we've lost in two years would have been more. Meanwhile, we are going to IMF for just $3 billion. So that's how the issue is. The fact is that many Ghanaians are angry. The anger stems from what we all know, level of impunity, corruption, bad economy, hardship, and so on and so forth. And so it will look as if state institutions, which must help to promote governance and accountability, are even making matters worse. EC is having its own problems. Just recently, when the Occupy Jilobi House uh, demonstrators wanted to start their exercise, the police waited till 24 hours or maybe less than uh, 24 hours to the day of the incident, went to court and it got a court to back this agenda and they gave the police powers to misbehave, and I will use the word misbehave, on the day of the protest because they took advantage of the court um, um, uh, injunction case they were seeking to arrest people, molest them, beat them, embarrass them with the view of suppressing them so that the next day they will not be able to come out to demonstrate. And this was the statement the police issued, that as we wait for the court to determine the matter, we wish to urge the public to take note and disregard calls from any individuals or groups encouraging them to assemble for a demonstration at the Jubilee House. We equally wish to urge the organizers to respect the due process in the interest of the public order and public safety. So they issued, it was a psychological warfare. But what they did rather provoked Ghanaians. The reactions were massive on social media and the organizers were bent on sending a message across and we all saw it and you notice some of these in some of the rushes i will be playing for you to see how young people as you see in the video who came out in their numbers in spite of the rains on friday on saturday they were out there and they succeeded in sending their message across but the issue is why is it that some state institutions and i'm very particular about ec the police the nia and of course the courts because if the court can grant uh, the hearing of an injunction way ahead after the EC has finished its registration of Ghanaians who are eligible to vote now, that is this year, for the assembly elections and next year, then what does it mean to me? For me, I'll continue to criticize because it doesn't make sense to me. And that is the picture we have been seeing over the period. But what we know is that there is another demonstration that has been planned and this will take off uh, next week, October 3rd. This is the Occupy Bank of Ghana demonstration. And yesterday, processes started in Accra here, where there appears to be some effort to sensitize the public on the need
to come out in their numbers to support this protest. Because after the Occupy Jula B House demonstration, we had several commentaries from people who suggested that it was a flop, and so there was no remorse and so on. So what you see on the screen is what happened at Ododododo. Before I introduce my guest, I want us to listen to a few of those who spoke at the event, and then we begin our conversation tonight. And they are control Ghana, and no one some the can say say. Ever since I'm a bar, a we are say I have friend Ghana, I have woman to her. In this bank of Ghana, a bocada. And so I could find the time on Kwa Bank of Ghana at me a boca sixty point eight billion. No, a person which no book a crack. Now say I am United said Ghana see a person or IMF. To the extent he said. Omo beka se so ma anji ile bi kura na Ghana bebo. Ye ma omo kwan. Omo di tumi F impose ile bi we so. Ni nyina chi do ko chi IMF. 3 billion ye prove si ya de ba ma omo. 3 billion dollars. E so mo mi an translate 6 billion na. Omo wi every bank of Ghana e yes say. E yes 6 billion. It is second bank of Ghana omo ko pa mu wisi ano. It's like e yes twice. And I almost we are every bank of Ghana. If I don't change the same bank of Ghana, yeah, I will see. Oh my, we are 6.8 billion. I will see. I know the same bank of Ghana. I put Ghana, I'm Russell. I could just see the poly 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 77 billion. That's the way I can. Yeah, you probably bring to us here. I have a fear and nine years. I didn't know how to meet it. 10 Ghana cities at all. Say, say, this is 100 Ghana city and at all. <laughs> We owe it as representatives of the people. I owe the people of Munde Pravam who voted for me to ensure that I hold the Bank of Ghana to deliver better service. And if Dr. Edison has shown that he doesn't, he's a printer. He must leave the Bank of Ghana and go to Newtown. Printers are both in Newtown. They print there. You should go and print and leave the Bank of Ghana for a proper manager of the physicals of Ghana. Those were excerpts of what happened at Ododododo just around Jamestown here in Accra last night. We understand that these public engagements will be going on at several places uh, within the country just to sensitize the people to understand what is going on. My guest is one of the activists who was also at Ododododo last night. He's uh, Bernard Mona. Many of us know him, but in this, uh, for this uh, conversation, I am recognizing him as one of the leading members of Arise Ghana, which are partnering the minority for the demonstration. First of all, uh, thanks for your time. I want to ask this question. There is no doubt Ghanaians are angry, but what appears to be missing from what we witnessed in the past, when protests are called, it will look as if people are angry, but they are just observing 
what is going on rather than the numbers you want to see on the streets a very good evening to you good evening to your many viewers and in particular your technical crew I, I keep saluting them because they do the bulk of the work of course we <laughs> are the ones who are seen and so sometimes they have to get here earlier than everyone get the stage set and we'll have to keep monitoring and even after the show they have to still do the unpacking so i salute them for their work first and foremost let me thank you for the honor of being here as we speak arise ghana the minority and the collection of many civil society organizations political parties are at one public forum this evening alone we have three different public forums one will take place at the old anointed times uh, venue one is taking place at bombay at uh, ododiodio then the other one will take place at osu junction five where we will be meeting with the fisher folks the final one will take place near the osu night market and so up to around 10 o'clock these public forums that's today as today, we speak as we speak they are ongoing the minority leader the ndc communications uh, officer um the arise ghana chairman rex omar listo well nana opoku bobie and sa kwabina awudu ishak hedaya bala mekankang and a host of others are going around and so you've cut me off those activities just because we have other listeners that will not have the opportunity to be part of this what is missing in all these endeavors is simple that whilst people are angry they are also looking at how they can make a living because you get up in the morning and you have to struggle and as i said yesterday i told you, do you, do you it's evident that the majority of Ghanaians are very angry. And the numbers that we saw yesterday, and from 4 p.m. this evening up to this time, in the various communities that we are engaging with people, simply tells the story that never before in the history of this country has anger levels reached a crescendo like this. And so, I just... I fear because anytime we do this and you just read the police statement the yeah. police will come and engage in theatricals issue statements to dissuade people from participating threaten people with beatings in some instance threaten people with deaths mm -hmm. and yesterday I said how many times do we want to be beaten because you are even more beaten and flopped when you as a father as a husband gets up at dawn and takes your your t-shirt or your shirt and pass it through the window and walk out half naked simply to avoid your wife from noticing that you are exiting the house kids should not wake up to meet you in the house because as they wake up you'll be confronted with breakfast issues You'll be confronted with supporting what they will eat. The fact that you will not even have enough sleep and you have to jump out of your house. And I say people put their wares through their windows and walk out to go and take to avoid. That is more than being beaten. So if you think that going on the street, the police will come and beat you. Then I assure you that by trying and waking up at dawn, avoiding your family because the there is not there. For you to do they do to do they do is to support your family to feed in the morning to buy kenke and to get fish or in some instances just buy the kenke without fish you cannot provide it master you are beaten and so it is not by going to the street and for the police to beat you that would be any different and so when your life has reached such a terrible state you are beaten and for those who fear to die bro whether you fear to die or you don't fear to die your death will come 
Does it suggest that people don't appreciate the realities of issues today and how they will likely impact on them in future? That is why, because if you look at Kumik Preku demonstration, for example, some say because of how massive the numbers were, the government of the day at the time was compelled to withhold oh, we, that, there, that there, was going there, to there be there introduced. Does it suggest that perhaps our attitudes may have influenced this government to be belligerent and is doing what it's no, doing. No, I simply think that, look, and I have insisted on this, and I, my colleagues know my stance on it. One day demonstrations are no more the route to go. Sustained demonstrations will pile pressure, not only on the government, but even the police that come there, when they are fatigued, they will begin to tell the message. And the last time I was at the 37. And That's the Occupied Jullaby Occup Occupy uh, House. I spoke and I pointed out to the Inspector General of Police that whilst you would send your men to beat us, I can assure you that just not far from where we were protesting, some of your men were living at the police barracks opposite the DVLA. You know that. I know the place. Go to the place. The place has been sold. And the project is ongoing. And they are demolishing the buildings. They have evacuated, evacuated most of the police people to Kwabenya. And you come and tell me that the Kwabenya property is a better place. You have forgotten that that place, the DVLA place, is a national place that was designated for special security purposes. Because if you look at that location and look at its proximity to the airport, to the Jubilee House. It's proximity to the Jubilee House. And it's proximity even to the police hospital and many other places. You will understand the raison d'etre for which Kwame Nkrumah put up that facility. For any government to come without thinking and to say that you are relocating the police and to give that property to private sector and the police are in happy mood for it, it can only be at the top echelons. I can tell you that majority of the other ranks in the police service are very bitter. Bitter because, see, if you are a police officer who works at the Flagstaff House, for instance, or worked at the police headquarters, or even works at Kaneshi, mm -hmm. and you were living at the police barracks right at the 37 uh, DVLA office, you see that commuting in and out is very easy and less expensive. Now that you have to traverse all the way from Kwabenya, the cost of movement alone will eat up your salary. And so anybody who wants to factor what the impact is should begin to look at what it will exert on people's pocket. Already their incomes are so low that they don't even survive on their take-home pay. And so it would have been important that the IGP and the police hierarchy should have stayed their grounds and said, no, this one, if you cannot add more onto that. After all, you are increasing the number of police personnel. So, some might say maybe it's a modern facility compared to where they were in the past. If you are there, you can start doing infielding. You can start demolishing and rebuilding for the purposes of the police. But when you auction it to private sector, it doesn't come back to the state any longer. If you go just below, where you have the military enclave, where the agri engineering used to be, or the agri engineering is. We have sold agri engineering to private people. And so, between the Air Force and Army, regular, you have private people living there. They are going to construct anything and everything. They are going to bring anything and everything because it is their, their place they have bought. This is near the airport. This is within your Burma camp. So you have lost control of your security. So you are making reference to the Aviation Social Center and clear. That's the, that's the no, area. Yeah, close if to you, the Defense Ministry. Close to the Defense Ministry, getting towards the, uh, what do we call it, the Bukhnam Kim uh, Golf Park. That area has been sold. It used to be called Unique Floral, that lane. Yes, I've seen that area. Very good. It has been sold. So, and you see, if you get up and you go to La Palm Royal, it's being sold. Right? You go to Ridge Royal in Cape Coast, it's being sold. 
You go to Bujua Beach, it's being sold. You go to Elmina Beach, it's being sold. What, what, what really? Now, they are not selling it for anything. They are selling it unto themselves. Appointees of President Akufado are buying. And the question I ask is, over the years, we learned from our mistakes, right? So we sold S SSB. You remember? SSB is a snake facility. And we said we are selling it partly to Societe General. So it came up as SG SSB. Have you checked the inscription of the bank these days? Have you checked? They have taken only the SG. And so it's Societe General Ghana. SSB gone. SSB is gone. So it means that the component of Ghana in that thing, they have totally dissolved it. And so when Senet has a property and La Palm alone last year gave you an excess of 10 billion in dividends, if there is managerial lacun, it is for you to correct it and not to sell state. Uh, no, when you come and inherit state assets, you are enjoined by public spirit to add on to. If you cannot add on to, you leave it as it is. What do we see? We are selling. And selling unto ourselves. So those that we have given authority to protect us and to protect our assets. Bro, they've taken our assets and they are sharing it. Nyafu, nyafu, fu, nyafu, nyafu, wah, wah, wah. Now, when, as an activist, I believe that a lot of people engage you. Ordinary people call you to share their experiences. Do you get this impression that, especially those you are fighting for, you are not that old, but would say there are many young people behind you whose future you want to secure through this activism that you you lead or you join do you get the impression that many young people understand the risk involved in their silence with reference to the mess let me use it in quotes that is going on well yes the day before yesterday i went as usual playing my basketball and when i finished i walked out there was this group of young men who were decently dressed and having a sip in order to wait for the traffic to go. As soon as they saw me, in fact, it was when I spoke. That they realized They, they realized that it was me. Then everyone turned and said, wow. Okay, now we understand. Activism is not an easy, so you have to keep training in order to do it. And they said that they chose to go outside of Ghana. And they decided that they want to stay off politics. And to concentrate on their businesses and being middle class. But since returning to Ghana, they have realized that no, they cannot be comfortable with just playing, going to the office and dressing nicely and coming. Turn around and said, Mr. Mona, we salute you for letting us understand that we got it wrong by staying away. We will join you. And that is how come that you see a lot more people around this time who are angry. Because our persistence, our consistency in fighting and in exposing the rot has now earned more attraction and that people are beginning to open up. And I told them, for instance, I am not a law student. Law students were going on protestation. And they told me, and I said, no. The reason for which they are going for this protestation is justified and solid. Injustice is being perpetrated against a group of people. It is our duty to fight injustice anywhere and everywhere. I joined the law students. Somehow, when the police saw that I had joined them, they thought I was one of the leaders. I wasn't because it was the SRC and the leadership that organized it. They kept calling on me to come and I always push the leadership. I was just in the middle guiding them as to how we will go. You know that they met us with tankers. They were ready to devour us in the most violent manner. And when we decided, we were taking a petition to the Flagstaff House. Between the Afrikiko Junction and the immigration headquarters, they had done a coup there. They blocked this side and blocked this side. So as we were running on the Kintaki interchange, they were meeting us from the other side and meeting us here. Then I turned around. The only option was for people to jump. From the interchange and no. and then either die then i said no one is jumping run into the canadian embassy and so we scaled into the canadian embassy and that of course is the territory of another man's uh, country so the police initially 
had started throwing their water and somebody drew their attention that no, this is not Ghana premises. We had no option than to give a petition to the Canadians that we wanted to give this petition to our head of state to address the challenges within legal education in Ghana. Since they will not agree, we handed over the petition to the Canadians and requested them to send it to our Ghana government. Today, legal education has been reformed. It is as a result of our persistence and our struggle that legal education has been formed. But majority probably of those who participated or who did not even participate would become lawyers and probably fight us. In the course of struggle, you must know that there will be enemies. And that is why when we go out, I know that, look, as soon as we get, we advertise community engagement, they send the assigns to come and watch. So there are enemies within us when we go to meet the communities. But we care not. Because we, it is our sacred duty to fight. Because I have kids, you have kids. And they must have a future. That future, we must create it for them. If we cannot determine, just as the future of an independent state was created by, by Kwame Nkrumah and his likes, for us to come and be independent today, it is our duty to protect and maintain certain level of future for our kids who are coming no, up. No, no, and so I get the sense that if you see particularly celebrities, people that you would not have thought that would be interested, they will be interested in entertainment and other things. And at the Julabi house demonstration, you saw people trooping in, uninvited. People came and packed their cars, came and solidarized and tell you that we'll go and come. Because we are on assignment, but we feel a part of it. I have no doubt. So that is motivation. The, I have now, no the, doubt. There's a that young the lady time has come. whose comment or vituperations actually has gone viral, and many people were wondering whether she was possessed or what really must have triggered it. Now, many people may have seen it; others may not have. I just want to play this for uh, your benefit, and then I will ask you what has been going through your mind ever since uh, Ghanaians reacted perhaps positively to this young lady and others who spoke during the demonstration over the weekend. God. My lady, my lady. I am very angry. I'm more angry at this morning. People are dying each day. The dying list is a uh, machine in Kolebu got smoke. Do you know the number of people who died? A 24 year old boy died this morning. His father is a teacher. His father is a teacher. Gave over 30 years of his life to the service. Could not afford transplants. Could not afford dialysis. 400 cities a week. What do you mean? Do you know how much taxes they check out every day? The cost of living. But you bring in flowers for your daughter's birthday. You bring a cake to celebrate 11. God will judge the government. The youth, we have the power. The streets, we have the power. If the police allow us to go to the flag sub house, we will allow all the cars to move. We want the president to sit up or resign. You know the president has already said that we are sticking out of the president. He's no more in charge. And the next leader will lead us into out of the woods and education that the president is no more in charge of the country. So one, we want him to resign peacefully. Pack his bag and baggage and out of the presidency. I want the government to know that I'm suffering. I'm a mother of triplets. First, I used to buy this one person at one city. Now, my it at three cities. Imagine if I'm having little children around, maybe the like, number of four or something. The money I need to change, after I need to change. But due to the situation that we are in now, I can't change my baby's diapers. Beautiful. Th this is the anger on the street. These are young people many never anticipated will come. Now, for, for some time now, I've been boarding uh, Trotro. I deliberately do because I just want to appreciate what really people are going through. Yesterday, there was an experience. There was a young man who obviously is a civil servant. I joined him at a particular junction and we're picking Trotro to another location. In fact, the idea was that if we move to another location to be faster for us to get a car to our destination. And the mate said, it is two cities, 50 pesos. 
and the man said two CDs. There was a fight, a near fight in the trotro. I said, I'll pay for your affair. The man told me thank you and he gasped for breath. Now, while the vehicle was moving, I was reflecting that, hey, two CDs, 50 pesos. I thought it were easy or very cheap. But to somebody, this was enough money. I had another experience. I was sitting at a pub. I like sitting at pubs in the evening. And then a young boy, around eight years, came to me. He was coming to ask for money. My initial instinct was, at this time of the day, why would you be asking me for money? I screamed at him to leave the place. On, quietly, but I tried to scare him to leave so that at least we have a feel that I'm not ready for uh, beggars. But when he was going, something dawned on me to call him. So I called the gentleman back and I asked, what are you going to use the money for? Where's your mother? He said, my mother is at home. What did she do? She said, she just attended. there. Where's your father? He said, I don't know where my father is. So I said, what do you want the money for? He said, we pay them the toilet. I was, in fact, I was touched. I, I felt ashamed. I gave him five CDs. And he ran towards where I know the public toilet is. And after a while, he came back and thanked me and walked to his house at the opposite direction. Just toilet. So I'm imagining how many parents are living in communities where they don't have their own toilets at home and what they are going through. And that is what we are facing. For example, if you buy one crate of egg or you bought it for 12 CDs and now you are buying it for 35 CDs, you will appreciate the consequences. Now, if you listen to these young people who obviously are pained and therefore they cannot hold their anger, does it motivate you to see Ghanaians now recognizing the need to speak truth to power? Well, I, I am extremely excited because this is an event that I was a part of. This is an event that I thought the police simply misbehaved. They showed their level of uselessness when they do not want to take their professional etiquette seriously. And subsequently, when they chose to become professional, we commended them. So on day two, Friday and Saturday, day two, day three, the police conducted themselves extremely well. So much that I had no option than to commend the IGP. And to commend the, I think the director of administration, uh, COP Yohunu, yes. who actually was in charge. And probably his level of discipline informed the success of the event. For the, the two and the three. For the two and the three. Those who decided to run riot on protesters on day one should be very ashamed. And I sent a signal that, look, you beat us today, we'll beat your children tomorrow. I can assure you. What does it mean? Why? Will the IGP continue to be IGP tomorrow? Will the regional commander continue to be regional commander? But they are giving birth to children. They may grow and be discontent with the way things are happening in this nation. And they may choose that they have a right under Article 21 of the 1992 Constitution to vent their anger. Probably our children will be IGPs, will influence them to beat them. What goes round, they say, come round. And so, let no one think that in beating us today, <laughs> you, your children, will be, you will be watching your children, you will be crying that this is the service you were in. But you've forgotten that in the same service, you mishandled your authority. And so, if you beat us today, we can assure you we will beat your children. We will beat your relatives. We will identify them and deal with them. After all, they are, they are children and our children are in school. We know each other. So let no one think that beating us... This is an open threat. I have no difficulty if you say it's an open threat. Let it be mine. But I can assure you, if you beat us today, we'll identify your children and beat them tomorrow. If beating is good today, it must be good tomorrow. Do you think the now, police... Now, you see the anger that has been shown here. Somebody 24 years with a bright and promising future for this country. The father had served as an educationist for 35 years. Poverty has reached a crescendo. Every day, prices of goods and services are rising about 40%. Every day. That teacher's retirement income is not rising. Paru Pasu, the rising inflation. The exchange rate has reached a certain level. 
the Bank of Ghana, that is supposed to be the lender of last resort, has run itself into a negative. They have run a loss. The managers are still occupying the office. The Minister for Finance has gone to the Bank of Ghana to let them print money in excess of 77 billion. They have used the money and we cannot say what the money has been used for. Every road in this country is not financed by the monies that we have collected. It is financed by loans. So much that we have reached a point we have skated almost every road in this country. Except the Pokwasi to Chebi Road. And you understand why Pokwasi... Now, when you say Pokwasi to Chebi Road, what exactly are you... I am inferring that why? The road here from Teshi to Nungwa to 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 through to Accra has been stopped. The one leading to Kaneshi has been stopped. Every road construction has been stopped. Only one road construction is done day and night. So and the road leading to the president's The road entry. leading to the president's hometown is being constructed in the night as we speak. If you go there, doubt me and take your cameras there. They are working. They are working speedily so that in case of any eventuality, that road would have been completed so that the president and his family can only drive home. Don't forget that within the Chebi Enclave, roads are asphalted as far as the cemeteries. You know that. That I know. Roads are asphalted all to the cemeteries. And now, the road from Accra leading to Chebi is the one that they are putting so much work. You see the number of demolitions. Why, why, why do you think any government will have such level so, of impunity? So when you have tribal bigots, when you have tribal bigots running the affairs of state, Everything is directed towards their tribal lot. And this is what we are facing today. The challenge we are facing today is that President Akufuado has surrounded himself with only people from within his family and extended family. From the Ministry of Finance to the Minister for Roads, to the, to the, to the Acting Prime Minister or Prime Minister, to the Secretary of the President. Everybody is very close and proximate to the President family. So everything is directed towards their hometown. Now, when you have such a situation, you can expect that the president will always be misled. And indeed, the president has said he has always been misled. Because from the PDS days to Ameri review committees and what have you, and we saw the level of rot, the minister for finance has shown gross incapacity of man managing the fiscal space in this country. But don't forget that members of the MPP stated that unless and until the Ministry of Finance is relieved of data bankers, the independence of our nation will be meaningless. Now, I'll come back now to when you. you get to that point, and the Minister for Finance is, is still in office, after even MPP, majority MPs in Parliament, has made an open protest, the President said, let him lead us to an IMF deal. The IMF deal has been concluded. The Minister for Finance is there. If it's not tribal bigotry, what is keeping the Minister for Finance now, there? My guess, I can imagine um, the heat. Of course, the tempo is rising because, um, obviously, Bernard Mona is angry. I am equally very angry because I share the sympathy of myself, like others who are going through hardship and feel that there's nobody who is listening. We're taking a short break. When we... So far, so good. Se open online portal at Ghana. Ah, ni pa share, ni pa follow, ni pa comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I have been doing TV.